the Society for Culture and Environment extends a warm welcome. You are watching a session on the Bandhavgarh inheritance and wild Madhya Pradesh from the Bhopal Literature and Art Festival, January 2019. We have with us Mr. Bittu Sehgal, an environmental activist and writer. He is the founding editor of Sanctuary Asia, a wildlife and ecology magazine based in India. He is a member of the National Board for Wildlife of the Ministry of Environment and Forests. He will be in conversation with Mrs. Madhu Varma, an environmental economist presently working as Chief Economist at World Resources Institute, India. Hear your biggest talks and uh, you're both learning out of it. And I think the all such things in mind was the situations in my world. Wonderful opportunity to see you in person. And I'm also to you. Uh, strike about my life. Uh, well, I've given this, you know, opportunity uh, I think the people are very excited and delighted with that. To uh, talk about his recent book, he has written not a recent book in terms of the inheritance of uh, conserved habitats, especially the uh, type of habitats. He, he has written about Periyar, Periyar, inheritance, Kaziranga, inheritance, Mahabharata, inheritance, Mahabharata, inheritance. And the recent one in the, in the road is Mandalay Inheritance, the wild Bangladesh. This is the book which has recently been launched uh, in this program. Yeah. Well, uh, to begin with, I was given this responsibility to write a small review of a book. So I will read it first, but I could understand, I could not uh, uh, imbibe from his amazing writings. The Badhavan Heritage is a mesmerizing photographic tribute to Badhavan Titanism, which is a wildlife event for the people who have battled for its existence. Showcasing some of the most stunning images of the Badhavan in Central India, this visual portfolio transports you to a long world of imaginable world. Mr. Sagal very passionately writes about Pantakir, the land of Tiger, a forest he has known for and loved for decades. Liberally shares insightful observations of his mentor, Dev Kailas Sankhya, the first director of Project Tiger, whose manuscripts he has edited down for decades. He takes his reader to the journey of highest density and self-repairing Pazangar ecosystem. He uses very wonderful terminology, which is so meaningful that we should very sincerely implement these technologies into actual practice and conserve our very unique habitats. I'll just repeat. He takes his reader to the journey of highest density and self-repairing Pazangar ecosystem, like a historian, an immensely knowledgeable and zestful guide, and makes your journey extremely fascinating to his in-depth narrations. Well, with this small background, I would just like to begin. Uh, lots of questions I have gone through your book. I was very mesmerized to see the whole structure of the book. Let me just uh, very quickly give you how the book is uh, structured and very appropriately titled your uh, uh, chapters as well. Well, uh, it's this, uh, this is your brother British intelligence celebrating and securing our national capital. You have picked up work from my profession of Ecological economics, which talks about not just you know we need to conserve, we need to you know take care of our you know physical capital, financial capital, human capital, intellectual capital, but also natural capital. Without conserving natural capital, no other capital would be of any use. So the title itself strikes me so uh, fascinatingly. He talks about back to future, um, which which is actually mapping uh, the part to chart the days ahead. Because he talks a lot about unborn populations, besides you know what we are getting from these tidal reserves, these conserved habitats. We need to actually bequeath our repository of knowledge, repository of flora and fauna to the next generations. He talks very passionately about them. We had a discussion about Jangan Singh Sham in the inaugural session, and what you can see now on the board art is his genesis. He very passionately, respectfully rather I would say, has written a very, very interesting and knowledgeable chapter on wild aesthetics. You find such a beauty in wild. That's what Jangan Singh Sham tried to portray in his painting. It talks about 
Häuser der Stadt war, Brunnen der Stadt war. Das ist die Leute aus der Mitte, das ist eigentlich schon. Das ist eine feine Kultur für die Oblänen, die ich in der Mitte des Kreuzes. Aber wann ist der Kreuzes, wie ich sehe, sind die Sektionen in der Dorfzeit. And Wanderburn, the right to see and Wanderburn Fort, is actually a, a fort supposed to have been by Ram, Lord Ram for this little Lakshman. It's called the Zipradar's Fort. Mm -hmm. And also it means that it's a land of Bagheer Khandis and Bagheer Khandis, actually meaning it's actually Tiger. So that's what he narrates in this chapter. He very fondly described, remember his patrons, uh, which we've discussed in the last few moments. He writes about the Maya Grandma, he recited the first title. So I'll begin with this question, Toji, uh, when you actually uh, okay. uh, when you when you actually saw the title for the first time, uh, I know as an economist I have read a couple of studies which say value of viewing elephant, value of green tiger. And if you Google India's website, three P's will come in front. You'll find Taj Mahal, you'll find tiger, you can see child. So this a tiger is so important for the country. So when you actually saw Tiger for the first time in Tara National Park, what was your reaction? So you know, I was just like any other kid. The only animals that I used to see when I was very small were in the zoo. And I thought that the animals are in the zoo because they are bad, they are dangerous, they come out, they kill me. That was what I grew up with at the age of 5, 6, 7, 8. I used to love going to the zoo. But when I saw a tiger in the wild, I don't know what happened. Something happened, for sure. I was with a person who had lived all his life there, Manglu Baiga. You know, he was a... He was a guy who was at a national park. And I realized just one simple thing. That the best habitat for a tiger or any other species is a human heart. If it doesn't exist there, it doesn't exist anywhere. And all the other things that we use, natural capital and this and that and the other, it may help to explain. But I think, you know, I mean, everybody talks of Amar Kattak as the source of the Narmada, but the Halon and Banjar valleys of Kana. You go over there and you know, you understand why did people worship this? This is the source of all life. And it's just treated as a resource. It is not a resource, it is the source. It's the source of life. And if we continue to treat it like a resource, then we are condemned to lose it. Because Anything that is more valuable than that will be fixed. So I don't know how else to put it like But I can tell you this that when I saw that tiger first thing that occurred to me was that I jumped up at Because that's what I thought. And then I realized that what, it treated me less than an insect. It looked at me and said, well, you know. And if, if there is one thing apart from the fact that I believe that the best habitat for all why nature is a human heart. It's the fact that as far as the tiger is concerned, it is not just an animal, it's a metaphor for everything that lives. From the bacteria on your kitchen table, the birds, to everything else. It's the system, it's the engine that drives the machine, that we think we drive. As an economist, I would say to you, that the economy is the only own subsidiary of the environment. It is not the other way around and until the economists understand that, we are destined to go straight down. Well, uh, connecting to this, I, I read that you were inspired by a couple of wildlife conservationists, Project Tiger Head and a couple of other people. So, what drove you to, how did you get inspired by these people and what drove you to wildlife conservation? It's like asking somebody, why did you fall in love with that girl, you know? Or the other way around, you know. The thing is that it's it, it, it just one of those things you don't even realize when it's happening that it's happening. And I was so fortunate. I met people at a very impressionable age. I'm now 17 and if you reverse the figures at the age of 17, 18, 19, I, I met wonderful human beings. By the time I got married, that my boss is sitting there, Madhu, uh, I almost immediately came to meet people like Kailash Santha. I met people like Sanimani and I saw that they had a reverence <coughs> but it wasn't a reverence that was um, artificial. They revered this because it worked. Everything worked like a magic jigsaw. Everything worked. If one of your leaves of the wonderful trees that you've written about were to fall down, 
And if they were not eaten either by bees or by termites, they would stay like plastic forever, cellulose. And it's not that they have digestive juices. They have bacteria in their gut that breaks down the cellulose and turns it back into something that can grow into another tree or the same tree. Now this is so complicated. And yet there is a certain arrogance in Homo sapiens that believes ki, I mean, I don't want to point to this, but there are World Bank documents after documents after documents that say that the forests of Madhya Pradesh are underutilized, they are not productive enough. So we must increase their productivity to make a long era. 1818 in Washington Street, if you want to productivity in Madhya Pradesh, so there was a complete move to cut down the natural forests and put tropical pines. So it was, it was scary, it was beautiful, the adventure continues. I don't know, Lavanya, whether you will carry on fighting as much as we did, but I think for a while you will have to. I never answer questions straight away exactly what you want. Sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, uh, by now everyone knows how to save the tiger. But how do we convince people on why the tiger needs to be saved? You have to partially answer the big name, but I want to extend the answer for this question. It's like this. That look at this country that we have. Look at the state first of all. Look at the diversity of this state. Sometimes I wonder that you go to a place like Oslo or you go to a place like Bern or somewhere in Switzerland and 7 million tourists are there, 8 million tourists are there, 10 million tourists are there. What do you see? Those two photos are given. Beautiful to hai, everything is beautiful but look at this. Nothing you have to watch. Ours is like a library with a million books and there's got 11 books and they're showing them out. And we, without even cataloging our books, we are destroying them. So the panic that is in me is that, look, we've been saying this for a long time. So you ask a simple question. I'm telling you, uh, I think, sir, you'll agree. Everybody and their son-in-law now knows how to save the life. No one has to tell you, do this, 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 do this. But why should the tiger be saved? That's a very big question. My 12 year old kid, my constituency is 12 years, the average. You guys are too old for me, but nevertheless. They understand it like that. And if it won't when they know, why are they doing this when it's so valuable? But when you have to go down to explain why to save the tiger, you can't save the tiger if you don't save its entire forest. Thank you so much. 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 When you save the entire forest, you are saving from everything from the bacteria to the leaf to the orchid that grows to the to every single organism in that you are saving. Now in the process of saving that, just our tiger reserves and I am talking even earlier, 600 rivers are fed with pure water. That's not all, that's what we started saying when we ran a program called Kids for Tigers. In the process of doing this, we have a, we have a 30 minute lecture called Oh Shit for children. The children love it, the teachers say, can you say poop? Hello. Can you say excreta? I say, no, oh shit. It's the most valuable resource in the whole world. Because every time a tiger shit, or you know, the bus goes around, breakfast. So you'll have like 15 species on that thing turning it into something else. So when you actually take a bird, or you take a butterfly, or you take an insect, they are with all, not just respect, but with reverence, I'm saying to the forest officers, they are 30,000 times more efficient than the entire forest department in creating forests. Because they can't live without creating more, and not a single species in the whole world leaves less food for its next generation than it got when it was born. Either it's in balance or it's in arms. They can only have a so oh shit is just a way of saying there is no waste. Can I just add something? Yeah, I was reading your book and came across a very interesting incident in heritage. When you started, you know, exploring uh, wild of Pradesh, I think it was kind of experience yeah. when your colleagues were traveling. They were even introspecting tiger's shit. Yeah. And there was, it was, it was, he writes in a very, I can't recall exactly the word, but he said that actually whole day we were walking through the forest and trying to smell the shit, which was still warm. Because we're trying to introspect what tiger has eaten. You already right? said that you talk about the entire habitat of tiger. It is but a spore, it is but a spore, tiger is surviving. And tiger is a survival.
Madhu, it was nice. Madhu, it was nice. That it was Valmik Thapar and myself and my darling wife. We were in Chorda. Bori and Chorda and Sakura what is now Sakura Tiger is there. And when we went there, we were in the car. So there we were, we saw this, it was cold. There was this large black cloud and it was a good thing. So we saw it and we saw it and we saw it and we saw it. Madhu was walking about 20 feet in front of us and she was like, Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. She was with her for his car. And Valme Thapar was so angry that I didn't see it in my life. And then Tiger was so angry that Madhu was so angry. So that was, those were the kind of sightings and now look at Sarkura Tiger. Three villages moved out. And the tigers have come back, and the bison have come back, and these are the sources of all our problems. So while the love is there and all that is there, the fact is that the hardcore economics of this has to be understood. These are infrastructures. There is no man-made infrastructure that can compare to that of a forest when it comes to harvesting water, taking flood water and putting the fertility onto farms so that farms can be productive, so that floods are controlled, so that drought is controlled, so that aquifers have water, so that wells have water and people can live healthy life. Sadharan Bhatta, Bara Sahib ki bancho ko sabaj lakti hai, lekin I belong to a very strong political party. There are only two political parties in the whole world by my reckoning. One is the Bacha party and one is the Buddha party. Now it's about time that the Buddha party decided that like the British we should not colonize the Bacha party. So these are simple words which we speak to children, they understand what to know. I saw it in the job, in the Shah Rukh Khan, but I have to publish it in the video now. It's very exciting. When you talk about the very interesting conversations about conservation, I said that I'm very proud to say, I'm a Swedish kid, I'm a Swedish kid, I'm a Swedish kid, I'm a Swedish kid. But when you come from the country, you talk about all the sources. Like you said, you look at the source, it's the resource through which you have to write. It finished the entire country. Well, uh, taking this forward, uh, I, mean, I should say, uh, connecting question, you just mentioned about the linkage between conservation of tiger habitats, and that's how tiger would also survive, and you're also secure, you also feel, you know, uh, confident about uh, living, and continuation of our existence. Uh, there's a strong connection between, uh, I had a chance to work with a couple of international scientists to talk about economics of ecosystems and biodiversity. So when the ecosystem assessment we talk about the connection of all the ecosystem services from these ecosystems to the well-being of populations. There's a strong connect between biodiversity and rivers and also biodiversity and climate change, all of which are in a connection with each other. So how would you express in terms of you know concerning the biodiversity and providing an answer to the very, very burning question of climate change and how to mitigate climate change and adapt to the impact of climate change? See, it's like this that uh, 20, 30 years ago, whenever we look to save something, Indira Gandhi had said that the tiger is our national animal, so we have done a lot of things. But a lot of time has flown since then. And at this moment in time, a magazine that I started something like 38 years ago, it was a for-profit, allegedly for-profit, we never made any money on it. But if we've turned it into a not-for-profit now for a very simple reason. A, I'm 71, I'm not going to be around forever, I want Lavania to take over. And the second thing is that we are now simply working at the tri-junction of biodiversity, economics and climate change. There is no human activity that can escape one of these three silos. Whether it is really water, whether it is healthcare, whether, whether it is education, anything, one or the other of these silos. Now the point is, that at this moment the people driving the wheel are the economists. They've taken out the rear view. They've taken out the brake. Rear view, why do you see the back of the brake? Why do you see the back of the brake? Why do you see 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 the brake? If you are only the accelerator and you have a cliff on the other side, there's a problem there. So I'm saying right now, very simply this, that Young people in India, they understand this. College going kids, they understand this. And we are going now and telling them something as simple as this. Your job is not to fight. You're, you may have to fight, but make that your last resort. The first thing is to do is to explain. We need an adult literacy program. Each one, teach one. Each child, teach an adult. This is not your world. 
This is my world. If you say that I am going to ruin this river because I will give you a three lane highway, I will give you a six lane highway, I will give you a chemical plant. But do it if you will because you are bigger than me, stronger than me, but don't do it in my name. Don't do me a favor. It's like the British saying we made railways for you, but all the railways went from my forest to the port. So what was the point? So now, Madhu, we are engaged in the ultimate human adventure. It's called intergenerational colonization. And it doesn't matter which color you are, north, south, east, west, what your religion is, which your country is, we are doing it across the nations of the world. And climate change is not a disease. Climate change is a symptom of a disease. And that is what we are trying to say. And Ajit, you get in this dharti se tilak karo ye dharti hai balidan ki. Main ye keh raho, aapko lekhit roop mein mein keh raho, mein hoonga ya nahi hoonga kal. Ki army navy, air force, coast guard, a protect, ko sharat ko bacha rahe. Ko dharti, jis ke saath tilak karna chaate hai, that is being protected by the forest department. And that is being protected by the villager. And that is being protected by those who used to worship the source of every single river. What is wrong with us? Why have we changed our track? And are we so blind that we cannot see? So when we produce books like this, the Bandhavgarh Inheritance, or we say Wild Chhattisgarh, what is it? There are two purposes behind this. One, just like the gazetteers of last, we use now, these are gazetteers in a sense. We use images, we use pictures, we want to tell people, that this is not a good thing that you are doing with your children, this is a good thing, this is a good thing. We don't have any right to us. What damn right do we have to take away the Narmada River's purity? What right do we have to build 550,000 crore rupees worth of dams in the Himalaya under glaciers which have already melted or are melting? They have no just stranded assets before they begun. What right do we have to plant chemical complexes and thermal plants in the Sundar Bans when 3 millimeters per annum is the rate at which the levels of sea are rising and the winds which used to be when I go up near the Sundar Bans was 70, 80 kilometers for the time you shuttered your windows. Norwesters would come, you would shutter our windows. Now they are 200 kilometers away. So we are going to see the largest migration since Homo sapiens touched Earth. The largest migrations are about to happen, they started. This is going to be not like Syria. Syria was only two and a half million people. Syria, by the way, was where agriculture was invented by women. This is going to be from Bangladesh, other ones, and this is going to be from the 24 Bargana South. When that migration takes place, Forget about any social security, forget about any, you'll be bringing stuff back from the market, it'll be snatched from you. This is an internal security issue, this is not an aesthetic issue, this is not an issue where we should be fighting. If all of us got together right now, this very minute and decided that Kana National Park, Bandhavgarh National Park, Sanjay National Park, all these are infrastructures of survival like lifeboats on a sinking Titanic, even then we might lose the battle. And then we ask, Titanic में छेदर मानी अंदर आ रहा है, state room में घंटे चल रहे हैं, blue Danube क्यों? मुझे swan lake चाहिए था, ये purple drip क्यों? मुझे तो mauve चाहिए था, ये champagne ठंडा नहीं है यार, और ऊपर deck पे trade unions बैठे, trade unions कहते हैं, देखो ये गजल हो क्या? बीच में क्या? नाच गाना कर रहे हैं और हम ठहर रहे हैं, तो trade unions भी on the deck life boats को जला के सेक रहे हैं। Rich and poor, they are both doing the wrong thing by nature. I'm sorry, I keep going on like this, but the fact is there is panic in me. And I would like that panic not to be something that can be, that frightens people. The magic thing with nature, which children understand like that, is that unlike the Titanic, nature fixes the whole itself. All it's telling you is stop damaging it. Self-repairing. So the time is short, just for the last question, and uh, so then what you just, you know, just mentioned, yeah, I'll give the chance for the audience to ask you to do. So it's lots of things are worrying you, and we are also sitting in a state which used to be once upon a time the kindest state of the country. We've lost that status, so we, we had in 1995 declared as the kindest state of the country, but we lost to Karnataka when the last census happened, and figures came out triple to six. And 308 tigers, you know, 408 tigers rather are uh, housed in Karnataka, and we lost this track. So, what do you think how we can make a first stretch to bring tiger status to the state? But 
Madhya Pradesh is the heart of India. It's the heartbeat of India also. If there is any hope for us, of course, of course, the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve has got maybe more tigers right now. But if you look at this subcontinent, Baag, Patnedar, Pani ka Devta hai. If the rationale is understood that we are saving the tigers so that the lean season flow of water into our various dams will improve, then automatically Madhya Pradesh will become the tiger state again. And I have to say, I'm not a, I'm, I'm politically agnostic. My only religion happens to be nature. And I say that Kamal Nath is back now as Chief Minister. He was the one who started the tiger state. I will take a delegation of 2,000 children to Kamal Nath and say, Jo bada kiya wo ne bana padega. It's as simple as that. There's no aggression there. It is just a way of saying, well, ye aage karna hai agar. If you want history to remember my generation well, then this is what we have to do. And baato karne se these men, millions of COP 21s and COP 27s and COP 38s, they keep on talking until the Titanic is underwater. So I believe now that the children's voices must be heard gently, and those people who have a sense of history and who wish to be remembered well will accept and understand that it doesn't matter whether it's your backyard, it doesn't matter whether it's a Kana National Park, it doesn't matter if it's the Himalayan National Park. The fact of the matter is that wild nature is the only hope we have of getting out of this crisis. Those people who come and create the problem and then ask the same people to solve the problem, we will not be able to manage to do that. We have to get something new and you have to help us. Uh, the value of existence is growing out of these value reserves. They say these are the agents of growth. There's no such paradigm of conservation versus development. Because you conserve, you can take We can go on, but time is limited. We can just quickly make two questions, lots of things would keep on in your mind. So you have lots in front of you, so you have to ask questions. No, I, I, I know what you to shoot the tigress because of the man That tigress Avni, her real name is T1. She comes from a place where she was shoved out of her, her natal area. And she had to give birth in a place where there was no forest. It was 30 kilometers away from the nearest tiger to her. There were 27 villages around. At least half of those villages have put poison bait out to kill them. People like me had said that that tigress and her two cubs, who were just 10 or 11 months old, had they just stayed with her for another four months, they would have learned to kill on their own and they would have been, it would have been possible to relocate them and move them to an area which was death. For reasons that I have no idea, all that political reasons or otherwise, a shooter was called from Hyderabad to come and kill this. There was, then always, every forest officer knows when you have to tranquilize an animal, you have to have a safety mechanism at the back because it takes time for tranquilization to take place. <coughs> but this was not done that way. What happened was that the shooter went out at night without a veterinarian, veterinarian and, blah, 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 and in the process of doing that, he just shot this animal and said it was charging at me, but the bullet went through here, went through the heart. So I wrote a small piece and said this is fantastic. India has produced the most wonderful thing. It's a gun that shoots in a parabolic arc. It shoots like this, then it goes like this, then under army. And then it can save the Indian army even in Siachen, you know, if we can do this. So I believe that that man should be in jail under the Wildlife Act. But I also believe that that animal could not have been left in its place. There was a large enclosure in the Bench National Park. It should have been left there. It, it would have taught its young ones to hunt and it would have gone. And sadly, those people who said that irrespective of anything that tiger had to be left there would have probably resulted in 20 more tigers being poisoned. So it was a complicated thing. Long answer for sure. Which last question will close on this Uh, come to the end of the session. Thank you very much, uh, for coming all the way to the and sharing your vast experience, knowledge, and such passion with the audience here.
delighted to hear you. Normally, the time runs out, they move chairs on the tables, but I think that they will be So, thank you very much, and thanks, audience, for actually listening to us. So, we should be thinking Well, I just hope that when we leave from here, we can do something as simple as this. That if we can write to the Chief Minister and to the Prime Minister in our own capacities without it being a campaign, that look, this is an infrastructure that we are saving, and the fact is that water is going to be the hammer with which climate change is going to hit everybody agriculture, industry, municipalities, health, villages. If we don't express ourselves, as Baba Abde once said, in the silent majority, if it doesn't speak, we'll become the silent majority. So it takes each one of us. Thank you. Thank you for watching the session from BLF 2019. Kindly subscribe to our channel for more such videos.